is a presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Let's go to uh, Andy in Boulder, Colorado. Hey, Andy, what's going on, brother? Not much, Tom. How you doing? I'm great, man. Yourself? Pretty good. Hey, congratulations on the grandbaby. Yes, thank you. I know. <laughs> he just sent, Tommy just sent me a picture. I mean, it's gorgeous out right now. He just was taking him out for first walk this morning. All He's right. growling and prowling already. Yeah, I bet. Now, Tom O'Brien. Hi, folks. This is Basil Chapman sitting for Tom O'Brien. I usually do the Tiger Technician Show 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock a.m. East uh, every day. And I also have the opening call, Daily Market Newsletter. Let's look at this 3 o'clock time frame price. The Dow is down 700 points at 29,383. Just went right through the 30,000 millennium level that I thought would be a very important level to hold. Nope, just went right through. What we're looking at here is, let me just quickly do this pattern, then you'll know exactly what I'm looking at. You see this pattern, this expanding cone, rising lows and much higher highs, and then it comes down. Normally, when it fulfills an up move going to at least four or five higher peaks, when it comes down, it, re it could retest the left side low, but usually it doesn't go under that for very long before it bounces. But look, 29.653 was the low of the 17th of June uh, earlier this year. Had a fabulous rally from 29,653 all the way to 34,281. Uh, that was what exactly two months later, 8.16.22, and then we came tumbling down. You see all these little H patterns that were failing, and now we've got this huge extension to the downside. So, uh, as I'm looking at this with the Dow down at, at 29,455, you can see a pattern that I talk about very often. We call it, we call it the dreaded H pattern because if you take out the left side low, you can go quite a bit low. You have two bars, sometimes three, in which to try to get back above that left side low. That's the the arch in the weekly chart being repelled from the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone right there. We've come down, and you can see this monthly chart has started the leg C to the downside. Now, what's very interesting here is that if you look at the S&P, the S&P is down at the 36.73 level, but it's 36.38. I believe it was 36.38. I should know that. I've spoken about it all, all day. 36, there it is. 36.38.15 was the low of the week of the 17th of June. Very sharp rally to the uh, 42, uh, 40, what was that, 40, I think it was 43.25 level. And then what happens is, it comes down, but so far it hasn't taken out that left side low. And you can see the weekly chart uh, is is the technicals are the technical indicators are failing. And what you've got in the weekly chart is finally there's an S, and that says that the nine period moving average has finally turned underneath the fourteen period moving average. We've still got a whole week to go for it to try to turn up again. So this is a very important moment. We'll do the QQQ right now. The QQQ is the NDX 100 Invesco QQQ Trust Series. It's like a fund for the uh, uh, NASDAQ 100. And here we are going into the Chapman Wave inside track. It should be a propellant zone, not a repellent zone. So this whole area into the 267 area is really important to hold in the next few days. And I'm going to talk about the next uh, uh, Sunday night session going into Monday in a moment. But he has a leg each of the downside and the Chapman wave, the the H pattern that we're talking about, it's sharply lower. It's gone one to one to the downside in the IWM down five at 166.37. And 162.48 was the low of June. It hasn't taken it out yet. And the monthly chart is arched over. Now, we need to go to gold. Gold is down very sharply, down $30 at 1651 Now, what we're looking at is for the first time in uh, quite a while, let me open up this weekly chart, and you'll see something very interesting. You'll see that although gold is held extremely well, considering what the dollar, the dollar is in a multi-decade high, the gold is still holding pretty well, except it's at the 1651 level, and it says because it's taken out this key left side support going back to uh, about August in the 1720 area, this is going to be very important because it, together with silver, um, 
it's acting very poorly. Silver, over the last week, I've been saying silver is holding a lot better than gold. All right, let's go to the, the dollar uh, because there are a lot of uh, there are a lot of things we want to talk about. We also want to talk about what can happen on Monday. Uh, we are forming a pattern that says there's a good chance Monday or Tuesday we could make some kind of a low. Well, the dollar is up at 113.12, uh, up a dollar 84. I should mention we've been long since 2018 and the 90 area. Here it is, just a magnificent move to the upside, but it is damaging. It's hurting the multinationals. You can imagine what profits are like with the dollar so strong. So what we're looking at is the dollar. I've got it in the leg seat. It means that sometime next week we could get some kind of a pullback. So far, it's extremely strong. If you look at the euro, USD, euro dollar currency pair, oh, it's just tumbled. It's broken all the left side supports. And this is going to be interesting as well because this is a divergence that I haven't heard anyone talk about yet. The U.S. dollar, Japanese yen, usually follows the trajectory of the dollar. They don't necessarily go one for one to the, to the upside or the downside, but they kind of parallel one another. However, 146, the U.S. dollar, Japanese yen currency pair, so the yen went to 145.90. This is the uh, continuous contract uh, on the 22nd of September. That's yesterday. Unlike the Dow, which has screamed to another high, this is showing a stalling motion. Now I'll try to put it together with a volatility index just before we go to a break. And what we're looking at here is the volatility index is in a leg D in the Chapman Wave methodology. It is up at 20, it hit 32.31 a little earlier on. It's at 31.36. This is different to other patterns because once again, it hasn't done that very often. Uh, when you look at the monthly chart, but look at the day, the weekly chart, you see the 38.94, that was the high, what was that, back in March, I believe at the March low, yeah, and at 38.94, that was uh, February, February the, February, the week of the 4th, since then we've made lower highs, and I've got a pattern that I call the Chapman Wave Inside Track Repellent Zone. Look how many times. How does the, how does the price know that it, in a diagonal pattern, it's got a, it just constantly hits a particular level and then reverses. I mean, I can understand horizontal when you say 120, but when you're coming down in fractions, look at this. We went right to the green line, the breakout line today, and now we've pulled back just a little bit. If we close very solidly green, this will be the first time in a long time that the weekly chart on a Friday has closed this high in a green pattern. There was a moment when it did that, back in early May, and then the week of the 6th of May, it made a high of 36.64 before turning down. So that, in fact, will take me to, uh, let me just check what the time is. Yep, just checking the time. That'll take us to um, the TLT, which is the bonds, and the bonds made lower lows today yet again, leg E in the, in the daily chart, and the yields are streaming to the upside. That's really important. But look at this. Economically, the crude oil is saying, well, we're in a recession for sure. You don't have to call it an official recession. It's down below 80 at 78.82. There's so much to discuss. When I get back, we'll talk about the potential for some kind of a low Monday, what we would look for if there was going to be a low and what we should perhaps think about over the weekend. I'll be back in a moment. Basil Chapman sitting in for the one and only Tom O'Brien. of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? 
Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi folks, Basil Chapman here. I didn't have a chance to actually draw this pattern in, although I did start it for folks, for folks in the den. They did see me start this pattern. And what? let me see, in the, so in the Chapman Wave methodology, the idea is to identify a low bar and then count each successively higher peaks peak and when it gets to the fourth highest peak peak d that's the objective to get you to at least the fourth highest peak in a price time match very often so look at this it made a peak d in the one minute chart the e-mini at 1407 207 this afternoon at 369 4.50 it pulls back and then using a particular candle as a midpoint you can go from this there's a, there's a Bar synchronicity. I spent a lot of time in my workshops and my for my subscribers talking about bar synchronicity. I go this to the exact bar. We went to a leg D to a peak D at 3692.75 at 3.18 this afternoon. So I just thought I'd throw, show, throw in a little of the technicals that we, we try to do here. So let me go through this. So crude oil has pulled back. Now, what is the scenario? There was a comment made a little bit earlier on that I just picked up as I came into um, into my office to uh, to do the uh, to do this hour uh, for Tom, um, and the comment was that it's very orderly. Well, it is orderly if, like you in the den, you're watching this minute to minute, or like I am minute to minute every day. But the whole idea is that there are. Not tens of thousands, not hundreds of thousands, but millions of people out there that don't look at the portfolio until they hear something on the news later that day. So to say the market's down 670, that's a lot better than a down 1,000 points, which was almost what we saw a little earlier on. And what I've been saying and what I said to subscribers to my opening call um, is that I'm anticipating – that if there is an ugly close to the day today, now this is a, an ugly close. If we come back from being down so sharply, we're only only down 300 points by the end of the day. That fits that scenario that says this is just a little too orderly. To really get some kind of a, a low on Monday or Tuesday where the volatility index, now let me just go back to the volatility index, to get that kind of pattern, which many of us have been in the, in, in the business for decades, uh, what we so first of all, these things don't usually happen on Friday. It hap happened on Friday, March the sixth, two thousand and nine. We were very fortunate. We went long that day. It was the S and P that on the Monday made the low on the ninth. Um, and that was unusual to have it on a Friday. Usually, it's a Monday, or, or maybe it could be late Friday. But 
usually it's over the weekend where you get this plethora of just horrible news and by the time the futures open Sunday night they are down sharply Europe's down sharply uh, and invariably by Sunday night or Monday morning there's something to do with war I remember 1987 with Suez Canal suddenly <laughs> out of the blue that's all you needed was a, a, uh, uh, this was the, the Monday morning the 19th of October uh, 2000, uh, 1987 uh, so these things happen so what I'm looking for, the ideal situation, now that the volatility is screamed up to 32 and hit this Chapman Wave inside track weekly, re it's a, still a repellent zone until it starts to trade for a week above that, maybe going to 33, 46 and closing somewhere above this trend line right here. So for next week, that trend line will be... I'll be as precise as I can, 32.39. And right now we're at 30.93. We haven't even hit 32.39 yet. So as it stands at this particular point, 30, uh, did I say 30? Let me just double check that. It says next week, that'll be 31, yeah, 31.18. So we've already been above that intra-week intra so far and we're pulling back. So the I, this is the ideal situation. The volatility index doesn't pull back much, but as we're going into the close, we've got, what, another 20, um, 28 minutes, uh, 38 minutes? Yeah, something like that, 38 minutes. There's another selling spree, and the volatility index closes very close to the high of the day. The Dow, which is now down 648, starts to slide, takes out even today's low of 29,250, or gets very close, but it pulls back another at least 100 points or more from here, closes near the low of the day or at the low of the day. With the S&P, and as I come around the bend, let's see, uh, uh, S&P is trading at 3671. It's trying to catch up to the Dow. It is rounding the corner, and it is second in the lead. It is down 86 at 3671. Uh, uh, it hasn't taken out the uh, goalpost of 3638 just yet, but what if it gets very close by the end of the day? And what if the QQQ, the index 100, following is in third place? It comes around the bend, and it is down sharply. It's down 6.36. It's at 273.71. And we we're looking at the left side low the target line which is at uh what did i say it was 260 269.28 we are very close we're four points away from that time is uh time is coming to an end at four o'clock today we'll see what happens there but most importantly what happens if as the market pulls back and we start to see a close a lot of people will say, I've got to get out, and they will send sell orders, and they will send messages to the, uh, their funds or whatever, whatever uh, programs they have to say, get me out at the end of the day. I want to sell my mutual fund or whatever it is. And that leads to this Monday uh, very sharp decline, especially if Sunday nights um, are very weak and there's bad news. I mean, uh, international bad news, let alone uh, uh, economic news. And let's face it, crude oil is telling us, I've been saying this for, I, I think, most of the year. I've been saying, we keep, they keep talking about recession. Well, if you in the SMHs, the SMHs, the semiconductor index, you've kind of been in a recession since January, where the, the price is just being lower and lower and lower. If you are in uh, just XLK, anything to do with the high-tech area or the tech area, you've been in a recession since even earlier. You've been in a recession since the high that was made back, I think it was December. Yeah, December the 31st, the week of the 31st, the XLK, the S&P Select Tech Spider Fund, hits 177.04. It's trading at 122 right now. So why they are waiting for an official designation to call this a recession, it's so many sectors. I, I went through sector after, look at this, this is the X, X, uh, LP. The XLP is the S&P Select Consumer Staple Spider. This is the area that really gets helped when you're in a, some kind of recessionary mode where the uh, food sector, if you can go to GIS, which is uh, GIS right here, is General Mills Foods, holding pretty well near the all-time high. If you look at something like a Hershey's, S-H-S-Y, -S -S 
Uh, also close to the highs. The highs are up in the 236 area. It's trading at 222. So it's it's within that area. But they're not, they're not doing that well. There are very few sectors. You can go to the IBB. The, this is the um, BB, IBB is the NASDAQ biotech ETF. Uh, not at the, at the June low, but certainly tumbling. It's at 114 now. Just four weeks ago, it was 135. And the all-time high is up at 170s. So uh, my contention is we've kind of been in a recession. It's just not an official recession yet. Look at the XLF. This is the financial sector. Look at that, down 2.3%, down 75 cents at 30.79. We're getting close to something. I'll be back in a moment and we'll talk about the other scenario. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman sitting in for Tom O'Brien. I'm the uh, author of the Opening Call Daily Newsletter, and I've got a chart that just came up right now. This is the, the weekly. I call it the triple yield chart, and every weekend when I do my market overview for my subscribers to my Opening Call, I show these particular charts. Very important. These are the weekly charts. This is the triple yield chart. The light blue here, the cyan, is the five-year yield. The, behind it should be the white and the brown. White is the TYX, which is the 30-year yield, and the brown is the T, TNX, which is the 10-year yield. And look, they're breaking out. They're breaking out in this cup and handle with a very sharp handle move to the upside. Very often that fails fairly soon, but this is a weekly chart. And look at the timber and forestry ETF wood, how it's broken below the 200-period moving average, like crude oil, like hybrid copper. And this is just saying internationally there is a lot of weakness. And look at the Philadelphia, Philadelphia housing sector index. Uh, it's making that H pattern, but it hasn't broken down as we speak. I believe that we've got a caller. I'm going to go to the caller if I can find out right there it is. Uh, we've got a call, Keith in Cedar Rapids. Hi, Keith. How are you? 
Very well, Basil. How are you? I'm very good. Thank you. You'd like to know? I was just curious. uh, You know, Tom had been talking about uh, getting ready for a bounce and such. I wanted to get your take on things, um, especially after today's action. Uh, What what do you see, uh, if I may ask, over the next uh, week or so? So this is very, what's happening right now, the Dow's only down 576. The day is young. Anything can still happen. s and down 77. In my uh, one-minute chart, I've got this in the new leg E in this pattern that we're talking about. So the scenario, the second scenario, which I said in the den that I would talk about after the break, was this, that instead of closing at the, the very lows of the day, if we were to bounce from here, just just closing like minus 230, you, we've usurped a lot of the downside energy that would see a, a big sell off Sunday night into Monday, possibly. And that stalls everything to get a really decent V-shaped recovery like we saw in June or even in the most recent one. Just a, something that's a little bit more than a bounce, but something that you have to look at as a potential to reshort, if you are short, if you are uh, looking to short on the, on the conclusion of the bounce, this scenario that we're seeing right now says, if there is a rally into the close, that would probably imply that the volatility index, the, uh, let me just go there right now and see where it is, because this is current, this is live right now, the VIX is now up. 30 point at 30.82 up 347 it's still a pretty strong move but if it starts to close towards the lower end like under 30 and that just means that we might have to wait or that the, any bounce that occurs just is a transitory bounce it is just something that is going to fail fairly soon and we're going to repeat the same process maybe even by a, a week from friday so i think what what your question is 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 there a chance that we can get a bounce? What kind of bounce would it be? What would mm-hmm. what would it take for the bounce to be able to sustain itself rather than just to be maybe? For instance, this is I always find this so fascinating. We talk about a bounce. Do we have to realize that from this move down 575 points today, even if there was a really good bounce, 1500 points, all that does is it takes us into Wednesday's bar. So it's going to have to, you know what I'm saying? And yeah, I always I say that what, the fascinating part of the last, you know, very often people say, oh, we called the low, but they were a day or two early. Well, a day or two early is sometimes 15 to 20 percent, meaning that the rally has to come back way stronger for you to actually have said you called the turn. So I always look at this and I say, you have to be right in the moment because um, even if you call the turn correctly, you might have to have, say, let's say you wanted to buy the Dow, Dow Diamonds. You could have, you might have to have a 10-point or a 12-point uh, uh, um, level of, of at least some kind of a stop that's very wide to be able to be successful. Or you could try it two or three times with a very small 1% uh, loss. But the fact is, all of this is not easy. When you look back, you say, oh, man, if I only, if I only did this mm-hmm. and only did that. All I'm saying is that there's a very good chance based on, I mean, I'll go through a couple of charts while, you, while you're on the air. I don't know if you can see them if you're looking at Tiger TV. Look at the XLE. This is the Select Energy Spider Fund plunging down to the Chapman Wave inside track support level. And this is energy. You'd expect energy with everything that's going on. Uh, with Ukraine and Russia, you'd expect energy to at least be holding very well, but it is not. If you if you look at, um, uh, let me go to, I'll go back to the SMHs, the semiconductors, because wherever the semiconductors go, mostly the, the, the trend in the general market is that direction. And this is very, very weak, and it hasn't broken the 189.94 uh, low of June. Uh, let me just double check 189.9. Yes, it has. It's just taken out. So what we're looking at is the timing is imperative. You, 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 in order to do it correctly, either you're monitoring the market absolutely every second of the day so that you can see Sunday night going to Monday. But now what happens if, let's just say, a, a best case scenario is that not for a low, but the best case scenario in the market right now is that there's a decent rally at the end of the day. 
and that the S&P futures, for some reason, on, on Sunday night, open up sharply, and we sort of meander to the upside on Monday. To me, that just wastes a lot of time. I want to get this, I want to get the, the, the low over, even if it's just yet another low that you're looking for a bounce. So to mm -hmm. answer your question, I'll be as blunt as I can. Everything I'm looking at suggests that the market is extremely oversold. And the question came into me earlier so that I did this on my show is saying, if you keep talking about oversold, why aren't you very positive saying, oh, this is going to be a fantastic buying opportunity? Why? Because timing is so important. Being wrong can cost you a fortune. You can try three times before you're right, but the three times can cost you a bundle, all that you thought you would make. So I'm just saying for the general, uh, the public, I would wait for something to happen. And what you really want is for a close above Thursday's high. Let me go back to the down. Uh, maybe the S&P. Uh, most people are looking at the S&P, so I'll go to the S&P. The S&P uh, high on Thursday was three. I think don't think it broke three eight hundred. No, thirty seven nineteen point ninety. So if the Dow at any point in this coming week can close two sessions out of three above thirty eight hundred. I think we've made at least a near-term low that is tradable. And then what I'd say to subscribers to my opening call as well as on the air this morning, my thinking here is that to go to individual stocks is so you could you could get a perfect timing on the market but pick the wrong stock. I would much prefer mm -hmm. to be looking at the uh, at the broader market. If you want to be aggressive, get a smaller position in a two or three times long. Don't get carried away because if you're wrong, this is a merciless uh, market. It's not going to give you any uh, credence to, to be being wrong. It's just going to smack you on the nose. So I'm just saying if you are thinking that Monday could be a turnaround and there are signs on Monday that there's kind of a I, – I don't want to see a V-shaped recovery early in the morning. I want to see a, a rally and everybody says, yes, this is it, and then another failure. And by mm -hmm. early afternoon – if we then get a sudden spike, and as we're talking now, if this is Monday at 3, uh, 3.38 p.m., and the market has gone down from being 350 to now being up 250, that's the kind of action you would want to see. I hope I'm answering it in some way that is, is, is functional for you. Yep, yep, thank you very much. Appreciate it. I thank you very much for calling. Folks, we'll be back. Basil Chap is sitting in for Tom O'Brien. Dow's down 570. We'll be right back. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today.
An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I'm O'Brien. Hi, folks. So I just wanted to make it quite clear that, yes, we could be making a low as we talk right now. Today could be seeing some kind of a low. The best is when you get this climactic low with a volatility index screaming even higher and everyone just giving up everything and selling and like a, a Monday after really bad news. So what happens if this is a low that continues rallying into Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, it means that there's a chance that a retest is going to be sooner because you've used up some of that um, – Hysteria that the VIX is indicating. Look at the TNX. Look at the way it is right now. Look at the screaming up. I've got it in leg F in the chapter wave in the daily. Weekly is a G and the D in the uh, monthly chart. It says it's going to go even higher. But right now, it is at a very critical area. If you're looking at the um, DOG, for subscribers to Bobby Nicole, we have the, the DOG, which is the uh, the inverse of the, dollar, the Dow, the DIA. Uh, we have it from uh, 33.37 back in August the 22nd, just before the big tumble started. And here it is. And I drew this in for subscribers. I said, look, this is what we are looking. This is what we are going to trade. And we've got a left side, right side price time match. I can't go to the low of the 16th of August at 32.49. But the high that was made back in uh, July at 37.52, if I use a particular candle, I get some kind of um, a high coming in, and so far this is still leg C in the Chapman Wave methodology. We usually like to go to a D, but in the inverse, they don't always correspond exactly in the in the uh, in the in the waveform. So here it is at 3750. 3752 was the left side target. It hit 3790. So it's achieved a chunk of what we wanted to look at. The other thing I wanted to do this morning, I never had time for it, was the SH, which is the spy the the exact opposite so in other words uh, as we were shorting the dow so the spy a short is the sh the equivalent of the spy but going up instead of down and this is in leg e the target on the left side was the 17th of june of 17.20 today's high 16.99 i got it in a leg e um so it's getting close to some kind of resistance level if you look at the s uh q q q that is the uh, SQQQ is the, here we go. This is the inversion, the three times short, the QQQs. You've got yourself a Q slash C, uh, sorry, Q. Uh, you've got a G slash C in the daily chart. But if you're looking at the technicals, the MACD is good. Stochastics at 90%. That's that's really, that's what you look for in a bull face. Of course, there's a bear, bear instrument, but it's a bull face. And the 9 is way above the 14. There aren't any signs yet in the QQQs that this is a pretty major turn. So what I'm saying is if the Dow rallies off the low as it has done right now, you're usurping some of that energy that would have been uh, very important for a major turnaround, meaning a major turnaround, not just a near-term three days, but maybe a two, three-week or even more rally on uh, starting from Monday or Tuesday. So this is a very important moment. So that's the reason... 
uh, why uh, when when I was uh, speaking just a moment ago with Keith and Cedar Rapids, I said there are different scenarios. So here's another scenario. Yes, you're way off the low, you're down 500 points. But, you know, if you think if you're someone who uses instruments like puts or calls, you could take a call position. You know exactly how much you're going to lose. You take a call position, and you're either right or you're wrong. And even if it, you're wrong, you'll have a moment where you can come out, you could get out with, you know, a bit of a loss. But at least that way, you don't have to put very much money. So I'd say to subscribers, we are hoping, we'll see, the, the weekend is young, it hasn't even started, that somehow or other we will go, uh, we'll, we, this is the biggest cash position we've had in ages for subscribers. Uh, we still have long positions, but very few. And I, there are positions I'd love to get in, stocks that I've been looking at. For instance, for years, decades actually, I've looked at waste management. I mean, waste management, give me a break. Is anything going to change with the action of waste management? They're always making new, new highs. But they've had a pretty big pullback from the 175 to 164. Um, so there might be some stocks. I'm not saying this one in particular. I'm just saying there are some stocks that are still holding pretty well that are in the secular area, in the area that is always in demand. I mean, they will just charge the towns and cities more for whatever it is. Um, so uh, there are places that you can go. So make a list. This is a wonderful time over the weekend. Make a list of stocks that, you, that you've that you loved, that you'd like to look at. And I still say, don't go full, you know, full steam ahead. Just maybe start a little position, see if it works. Raise your stop. If it starts moving high, you can add a little bit more. I'm not saying this is a time to get carried away. But what I am saying is that, I don't recall for a very long time, since pretty major lows have been made at various times, and we've been lucky, we've made, been able to pick out um, most of those lows, but at the same time, there's, there's, there's no need for diving in and saying, I am right, because you know what's right? The market is right. So whatever the market does, you have to kind of follow the market let the market tell you, and what it is saying is that even if there is a fabulous turnaround this week, there is so much resistance in the Dow between 30,900 uh, and 31,400, that could be a big stalling. But isn't that a lovely rally from here? So that's why I'm saying be very selective, know what you want to do, and let's face it, the selling is so intense it doesn't mean that it looks like a, a low. And even though we've got the VIX index at, at not major highs, but at highs, even though you've got, I mean, if I go to my Chun index, it was screaming to the upside. That's uh, Richard Arms short-term trading index. Uh, that suggests that there should be a 9 to uh, 11 point. That's nothing these days. A rally in the S&P, even if it's from a lower level. There are all sorts of signs. Just be faithful to yourself. Don't put yourself in a position that says, oh, I, I got to make up. There's no making up. You're in a position. It's a new position. Think completely fresh. Whatever it does is going to help you. If it, if it, if it's you correct, it's going to help you. And if you're wrong, you're putting your stops and you say, it's okay. I, I'm out. I'm done. That's not for me. So this is a really important moment. It's an opportunity, perhaps. We don't know. But there's a, there are a lot of pieces of evidence. There was as someone mentioned in the den. There was a thirty. It was a thirty to one reading in the downside for the S, for the New York Stock Exchange. Unless I'm completely mistaken, I recall Marty Swank, a very famous um, uh, fundamental analyst, um, uh, used to be on with uh, Louis Ruckhauser at Wall Street Week on Friday nights. I remember him talking about the day, uh, the Friday before the crash. I remember him talking about that and saying, "Oh, I." I I don't want to really mention this, but I feel it's imperative, and I, I think we might, I think we might have a crash on Monday. Anyway, so he spoke about thirty to one, and that to him was always a huge signal to say that there are signs that this market is starting to form a base. Well, is that the case right now? 30, 30 to one downside. So the day is still young. We've still got a little bit to go. Let's see if that peak E that I notated in my one minute chart. Oh, it went to an F. Uh, peak F, right? Oh, it went to a G. Even it went to a G in the Chapman methodology. Let's see if that starts to pull back. We've still got ten minutes to the close. What would I love to see? Portfolio-wise, I wouldn't love to see it, but I would love to see a slide into the close, a lousy Sunday night, 
and Monday we finally get a turnaround that is meaningful, at least for the shorter term. To the I'll be back in a moment, Basil Chap, and sitting here for Tom O'Brien. Dow is down 545. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it could seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for Dave's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman sitting in for Tom O'Brien. I'm the author of the opening call, Daily Newsletter, and the Tiger Technician's Hour, 10 o'clock to 11 East, uh, Eastern Time. Uh, every market day, we're looking at the Dow. It's come back quite a bit. It's uh, down just 5, 514. S&P's down uh, 69. So this is going to be very important. So I think it's, this is the moment where if you look at your portfolio, if you had a portfolio that was uh, just uh, you know, like higher or whatever it is, and just money you've put away, put away, put away, and you don't do very much to it, you're just looking at most of most most people have a portfolio that's down 20 or even 30 percent at this particular point we've been here before we've been here many times before in the long term the theory is that it always comes back and then it even goes higher but as you're looking at it it ain't a pleasant scenario so my my impression right now is that you're starting to see some buying come in the buying that i was hoping would be monday but when you think that we're still down pretty sharply it's still a pretty ugly day, and we did break the left side low of June in the Dow, not in the other indices, and that makes this very important because this is exactly the area that should you should start to see some fund managers say, "Hey, I know value, I see value, I know when to buy." I'm going to so you're going to see buying come in, and my theory here is that with outside kind of a climactic low, that would be great if it comes over the weekend into Monday or even Tuesday. 
rallies have lost a lot of their upside energy, but they can rally. It's just not quite the same as when you make that ictus down, when people just throw the towel and say, I'm done. And then you get a really good rally. And then after three days, you look back and you see the V-shaped pattern. You say, oh, my God, I just threw everything away at the bottom. And now we are 20% higher. That's what you want to see, uh, to see a market that is going to be sustained. So as it stands right now, down uh, 500, nearly 600 points, that's still a lousy market. When we come into the close and people start looking at what happened this Friday, that is not good. So there are signs, I just wanted to mention that there are positive signs starting to show at least for a decent rebound. And we're hoping that it actually starts come Monday or Tuesday. Have yourself a wonderful weekend, everyone. And uh, of course, check out uh, all the different uh, uh, hosts here at TFNN. It's great to have you. And uh, we'll see you all on Monday. And, uh... Building wealth trading.